Hello everyone, it's Denny Hay here in Barcelona at the ICIC 2011 conference and I'm here with one of the keynote speakers, it's Fernando Guerrero, the CEO of SolidQ. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Denny. So this morning you held a presentation on a very interesting topic, I thought, was making business sense of the continuous anar anarchic flow of social media data. So could you explain a bit, what does SolidQ do in this space? Well, SolidQ is a consulting company. So what we do is help organizations, maybe private companies or, or public institutions, to, to manage their information in the most effective way. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be anything from providing BI techniques to get sense of the large amount of data they have, mm -hmm. or it can be also analyzing the comments they receive from customers and visitors, etc. They can be make sense for them. Okay, and you, you mentioned in your presentation that there's a, a, an ever-growing flow of social media data on all kinds of platforms. It's Facebook, it's Twitter, it's YouTube, right. what have you. Why should companies pay attention to that? Because there's lots of hidden information in there they're not paying attention to. Uh, for most companies, they care a lot about the transactional data, mm -hmm. but not so much about the behavior of their own users, or their own employees, but also their customers. Um, to give an example, um, for eBay, for instance, or companies like this that sell online, the importance of the visitors that are not buying anything is far greater than the visitors are actually buying stuff. Okay. So where do they go? Which pages they visit? How often they visit those pages? Um, how they jump from one article to another? What type of comments they read? Or whether they avoid the comments altogether? These patterns of behavior of the users, those who never buy anything, those who never actually create any transaction, is far more important than the transactional data itself. Okay, that's like a hidden hidden opportunity. That's right, it's yeah. a hidden opportunity of use. Okay, so what kind of technology techniques do you use to make sense out of those well, mountains of data? Yeah, probably? well, our company, um, by well, by choice, we decided from the very beginning of the company to work exclusively on the Microsoft Data Platform. Mm -hmm. So we work for this from the tools point of view. We work exclusively with the Microsoft SQL Server and all the BI stack they have, plus um, .NET programming and things like this. But having said that, uh, we had to interact with many other platforms because we had to interact and integrate data that are coming from other platforms. Most of our customers, they have a variety of different database platforms. We need to get instruction, extracting the data from, or even public information that is not actually hosted by our customers, such as tweet feeds or Facebook comments, etc. And but, so we had to learn, we had to understand how those database systems work in order to integrate that information in the most effective way. But also beyond that, we don't like to stay just doing the job that's supposed to, to be done. We like to go ahead and look ahead to what type of things we could do to extend that concept mm -hmm. and try to predict new ways to improve the, the way our customers work in the future. So in order to do that, we work very closely with some universities. Okay. We started this process with collaboration with the University of Alicante and Murcia in Spain. But we are extending this concept now to other universities away from Spain. That was only a pilot program. But we have people in 22 different countries. So we are starting um, the conversations with different, different universities in Slovenia, in the United States, in Italy, in Austria, to, to make sure we can extend this and not just do the work as a, as a billable project, let's say, for a customer, but engage in university professors and doctorate uh, PhD students so they can do research in something that can be very, very relevant for the industry moving forward. Yeah. And in fact, right now, we have seven guys doing their PhD with us. And we are sending that group to 10 more people in the next few months. Okay, so one of the examples you mentioned in your presentation was that you also help po U.S. politicians with the social... There were no U.S. politicians. Oh, there was in another, in another country, politicians. In yeah. another Latin American country, yes. Okay, so, so could, could you illustrate that for our listeners, what you, what it, you helped them do? Yes, it's, um, it, w that came out of uh, an example we built for Microsoft. It was a proof of concept we built uh, to help um, a bank, a large bank, to identify where to put their offices mm -hmm. so they can, they can actually um, optimize their resources and get better benefits moving forward. So the example itself was not relevant for this other case, but they saw that example, they, they clearly identify that using the same type of principles, 
perhaps we could help them to optimize their budget for the next elections. Uh -huh. So we had conversations with them very deeply about uh, what type of factors we should take into consideration to optimize, basically, to, to try to make sense on how to optimize that budget, to maximize the number of votes per, per area, but also the number of uh, Senate positions they could get. Okay. Right? It's just a matter of uh, combining lots of information. They were already using uh, very effectively tax mining yep. to, to just monitor the um, reputation of yep. their sen senators, but uh, that was not enough. They wanted yep. to go beyond there. So by looking at the way we work for this bank, then they, they identified that perhaps we could help them using data mining techniques to try to optimize that budget. Obviously, that cannot be a rule, otherwise no. everybody <laughs> will do it, right? <laughs> and then they'll, they'll end up not being useful for any political no. party. Yep. But there's, um, obviously they can give them some insights into data that might be hidden behind all that vast Yeah, because it's a mountain have. of data. Yeah, they have so lots you, of data. So you, you use like They don't sentiments? know what can be relevant, what cannot yeah. be relevant. Okay. Just so much information. Yeah. So do you, what do you use? Information. Was it sentimental analysis? Was that? Um, for this particular thing, not necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's more based on trying to take all type of information we can find, yeah. from meteorological data to demographic, uh -huh. to economical data from the places, and trying to convert that, trying to convert that to the results, end results, votes, yep. in each one of the elections, and then trying to get some predictions moving forward. Mm -hmm. First, we, we have to identify uh, how much of that data was relevant, yep. right? which factors were relevant in this. So that's hopefully is going to happen for the next election, actually. Uh -huh. okay. uh, so far, we've been just in, in conversations with them, but focusing the project. Um, Probably that, that will happen in the next election. I wouldn't say which country is that. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll hear about that in five years' time when right, it's right. really successful. Okay, so, so lastly but not leastly, um, so this kind of, of consultancy is, is really new. Uh, and if you look at current organizations, uh, it's, it's mainly people that are high up in the, uh, the hierarchy who will think, you know, it's a social media thing. It's all a fad. You know, you're just going to wait two years and be gone. So what would you say to, to convince them to use, like, social data mining? Well, basically, the, the key to convince them to engage in one of these projects right now, at this point, of the global economy, mm -hmm. is cost. Yeah. If we can prove them that they can either save cost yeah. by not investing in projects, by not having any chance of success, or by really saving real costs they're already encouraging right now. They're already spending money in things they shouldn't, yeah. right? Or they have a better way to solve this, yeah. like a moderation of forums, for yeah, instance. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, we have some customers that are spending millions on moderating their forums, their public forums. If we can prove that using these technologies, they can save money or they can use the savings to improve the service. Yeah. Either way, it's up to them to do it. Yeah. Then when you talk about the cost per action, the cost per forum moderation, then the, high man my high the upper management can really understand that um, at this point, right? Then you can talk about investment for the future or whatever. But at this point, they're more about cost savings yep. than anything else. And that goes all the way from media companies to retailers even if uh, some, of the, some of the retailers we're working with, they're enjoying a very, very good times this year, even mm -hmm. under recession. Mm -hmm. But still, they want to learn more about their data. Yeah. They, in some cases, by optimizing their systems, we managed to get to deeper detail levels they never managed to do it before, simply because they didn't have enough hours in the day yeah. to process all the data they have. Yeah. And then action. So they yeah. had to simplify the process by losing some relevant data yeah. they shouldn't lose. So by optimizing those systems and trying to make it better and faster, to, we managed to un unprocess that them to another, another and make predictions. They can save them money by not producing the type of things they shouldn't produce, mm -hmm. by not moving the, the, the goods they shouldn't move, or by focusing their efforts in lines of product that are more successful. Yeah. Okay, with that, Fernando, I think I want to thank you for your wonderful insights into this brave new world of social media analysis. And uh, if our listeners are interested, the link to Fernando's company website will be on the blog post. So once again, thank you, Fernando, and who knows, we'll meet again somewhere, someplace. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 10 minutes.